Hello everyone, today we're going to cover the switch statement, which is really similar to the multi-way if statement. Some things to consider with the switch statement is that they will only work when the possibilities are integer values. They will also work with characters, and that's because uh, really behind the scenes they're just an integer value, which can be determined with an ASCII table. Let's take a look at the syntax. The keyword is switch, followed by parentheses, right here. And inside of the parentheses, you have to write a variable which stores whole numbers. And so in this case, we provided an integer variable named var and we initialized it to one. Within the scope of the switch statement, so remember, underneath the switch statement, we need to write curly braces, and that's gonna be its scope. Within the scope, we can write the keyword case followed by an integer value. So for example, if our variable is equal to the case number, then it'll execute the code that is followed afterwards. In this case, since our variable is equal to one, it'll print the words first option. If I set the variable equal to, let's say five, you'll notice that it prints the third option. You can write multiple cases for a single outcome, such as with case 80 and 90. If our variable is equal to either 80 or 90, then the output will be fourth option. So let's take a look at that. Let's just set it equal to 90. And so you'll notice it's, it's pretty much like a multi-way if statement. And the last case is default. And that's the same as the else keyword in a multi-way if statement. Essentially, anything besides the options that were listed will fall into the default option. So for example, this can be the value 55 or negative 10. So let's just write negative 10. And that should be the default option. That's what we. That's the code that's running here. The last thing to mention is that we have break statements written after each option, and there's actually a reason for that. If you do not write a break statement, then you'll have what's called a fall through, and essentially it'll execute each option from when it is true and downward. It's easy to see with an example, so let's start by removing all of the break statements and see how this really works. So let's go ahead and remove all of these, and suddenly this will make a lot more sense. <clears throat> let's set it equal to the value one. What's gonna happen is it's gonna be true with case one and it's gonna execute this code, first option, but it's gonna execute second option, third option, fourth option, and default. It's gonna go everything from when it's true and downward. So let's take a look at it. And you'll notice that it executed everything. What if I set var equal to, let's say five, which is the third option. You'll notice that it's gonna print third option and fourth option and the default. So from whenever it's true and downward unless you have break statements, which will prevent it from you know, reaching those, those parts of the code. Um, and so uh, please make sure to always include break statements after uh, writing your cases. We're gonna look at more, a more relevant example in just a second. So now we're gonna look at a more practical example of using the switch statement. Let's say for example, you're um, out of gas and you're at a gas station and you only have $20 for your gas budget. And we're going to go to a typical gas station. So it's going to have three options. And notice we have the unleaded, the plus, and the premium. And so your option is to choose between one of these three selections to fill up your, your car with the $20 that you have. And each of them have different prices. And they all have different corresponding numbers, 87, 89, 93. This is the example that I chose to use. So what you're going to notice is that the unleaded costs $2.50 per gallon. The plus option costs $3 per gallon and the premium costs 350 per gallon. Actually, I could have been more specific with per gallon, but that's okay. And what are the option selections that we actually have? Unleaded is the number 87, plus is the number 89, premium is the number 93. So that's, that's looking good so far. We know that our budget is 20, um, and we're gonna select some, some value for our gas. It's either gonna be 87, 89, 93, or we can enter some other integer. Let's just assume we have a keypad instead of just pressing the actual buttons. So we can pick something else actually. And then what we wanna find out is how many gallons of, of gasoline did were dispensed to your car. So how, mu how much gas did you pump into your car? So we're gonna prompt the user saying, please select your gas choice as the number option 87, which is unleaded, 89, which is plus, and 93, which is premium. Any other option really doesn't make sense, right? It's just, it wouldn't really, it's not really one of the three options that are available here. <clears throat> so we're gonna write our switch statement and it better accept the variable that has a whole number. Well, our gas selection isn't of a type integer and it's really, sh it really should only accept these three values, 87, 89, 83. We could talk a little bit about, actually we won't discuss uh, enums, but I definitely recommend to look into them. Um, so inside of here, we have a gas selection which is gonna be the option that was provided by the user that they selected. So 
we're making use of const um, of, of name variables or name constants um, just because it's going to make our code look a little easier. This says case the unleaded option. Unleaded options looks a lot more clear rather than just saying case 87, right? That just seems like a magic number. Where'd you get that from? So if they pick the unleaded option, we want to find out how much gasoline was dispensed. So we're going to run this code if they pick the number 87. So the amount of gallons that was dispensed was their gas budget, which is $20. That's pretty much always $20 divided by the unleaded cost, which is 250. So if we do this, um, then that should actually be the $20 divided by 250 should be about eight gallons. And then we're going to hit break because we don't want it to run through or fall through all of the cases. The next case is the plus option. And in this case, our gallons dispense is going to differ. It's going to be that same gas budget, but it's going to be divided by the plus cost, right? Um, because that has a different cost associated with it. And it's going to affect the amount of gallons that we're going to be able to pump. And the last one is the premium option, and it has that same formula. It's just going to be the gallons dispense is uh, the gas budget 20 bucks divided by the, the 350, essentially. And what if they don't pick any of those three options? Then we're going to make sure to cover those with the default by printing out invalid selection and also setting our gallons dispense equal to zero. You can write as many statements as you want for each case before you hit break. So I, in, in, in these cases, since it's a very simple example, I'm actually only writing one statement and then writing break, but you can write multiple statements and that's works perfectly okay. At the very end, once this is done with its logic, its, its branching logic, um, it's either gonna, it's gonna be one of these options, uh, one of these four options. And then at the end, it's just gonna print the total number of gallons dispense is so-and-so. So let's pick option number um, uh, unleaded because we know that's going to be eight gallons. So let's write it. Uh, please select your gas choice. So we're going to write 87. The total number of gallons dispensed is eight. Perfect. And if we were to pick something else, like let's say like a default value. Um, so let's say like six. Uh, we know it's in invalid selection and the total amount dispense is zero. And so this is a bit more useful when you're wanting to check multiple cases, and they're going to be whole numbers. Okay, so I hope that this helped. Uh, um, I know that it looked a lot like the multi-way if statement, but this is a bit more of a convenient way to write um, some of those conditions. Uh, thank you so much for uh, watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video, and I will catch you programmers later.